Speak about it. Welcome back to Speak About It. We are now on episode three, and today I have um, someone that I'll call my go-to man when it comes to music. This is someone that I've been working with for about four or five years. Someone who I believe has helped shape my musical identity, and someone who has um, executive produced my debut album, The Composer, which we hope to be bringing you over the next couple of weeks. So it's really exciting stuff, and I'm really excited to be sitting down and talking to Shemzi, record producer, radio DJ, songwriter, vocalist, rapper, <laughs> all around extraordinaire. So you know what, we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna get his insight into the music industry and hopefully you can take one, two, maybe 10 things away from this episode. Let's AKA Too Heavy. Too Heavy. AKA Big Selinski. <laughs> AKA Big Shem from E10. <laughs> hey, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. What are you saying though? <laughs> Bro, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. What are you saying? Good. Ah, man. Things yeah. are alright, you know. Alright, so, so like, obviously, like, I know what you do. Yeah. The people in the building know what you do. Okay. The people back home might not know what you do. So right. tell us a bit about you, what you do, how you, get, how you got yourself into um, kind of um, the different situations that you're in. Okay. Uh, I wish. The amount of times I've been asked this, there was like a compressed version that I could just say like in <laughs> Bro, 10 seconds. Say the real man. Uh, the real. Right, let's see. So started off as a young, young boy growing up in a family that had, that consisted of, um, you know, evangelists, um, reverends, gospel singers, musicians, like my aunties, cousins, grandmother, and so on. Uh, my mum used to let me go to my grandmother's house and well, my mum dropped me off at my grandmother's <laughs> house, more like, and um, my auntie had a piano there, and I used to just listen to whatever was playing on the TV, whether it be, you know, whatever the TV show was, the cartoon, and I will try and make that stuff back on a piano from as easy as stuff as, like, you know, EastEnders and whatever. You know, that's something that someone would learn to play, especially if you're from England. Mm. You, you learn to play that on a piano. Rugrats. <laughs> yeah, Rugrats, all of that. Yeah. Uh, then... I got. I took an interest in um, R and B because my older cousins and my siblings were very much into the R and B and hip hop stuff. Mm. Growing up, I'm. I'm not. I was born in 1991, so I didn't exactly grow up in a in a time where I can say I was partying to Biggie and Tupac and Puffy and Mace and them guys. But I was old enough and aware of who they were, and um, I got into the hip hop stuff like that and then the garage my older cousins they put me onto this garage thing hard and jungle as well by the year 2000 i was already like joining my my cousins on their little home dj sets when all the olders from my block will come around to my auntie's house everyone grab crowd around the decks spitting bars and i had my little you know don't give a damn don't give a d lyrical bad boy mc like all of them kind of and i'm like i'm like 10 9 even you know what i mean and then the grime thing happened and i jumped mm. on that and in between i was still kind of singing but because at the time we're talking early 2000s and mid 2000s it still wasn't cool to be from like you know and i quote the roads and you know be a singer be melodic in your music that's only cool now and you can still get like hood ratings for being melodic in your music mm -hmm. whereas back then if you drop any little melody <laughs> like man will question your masculinity yeah, do you get yeah, what i'm right. saying so a lot of man didn't even know i sang mm -hmm. until like 2007 mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and even then it was like all right that drake guy's doing it so straight away i got the comparisons mm -hmm. in between all of that um so i've done a bit of grime so i was emceeing practiced DJing like vinyls like they taught me on vinyls back in the early 2000s and that um, then I got into making beats using FL Studio uh, if you look might remember when cereals used to give away like CDs and toys and that there was a thing that come with um, one of these CDs I think it was E I think it was EJ it was an EJ CD and and um, it come with a little music program and you just have loops and that and you just make your loops and I used to just freestyle over the loops make the beats and that and um, 
yeah, studied music in school, college, done a year in uni, dropped out, don't follow me. Yeah, I mean, I'm not telling kids to follow me if this is not your passion. But yeah, I dropped out. And um, yeah, I just kind of said, let me do this self-employment thing, innit? And, mm. and see, there was this bumpy road, man. Like I had, really, I had like one job. I, I've only had like one proper job where I was waiting on someone to pay me. Mm. And um, that didn't last a month. Yeah. And that was like, I was 17. Mm. And then after that, it was everything else it was like self employed. And people would either just book me and I fill out invoices and mm. things like that. And I'm 27 now. Okay, okay. So, um, like, if we're going to put everything into a nutshell, so yeah. let's say, like, you're a, you're a DJ. Or, yeah. On, let's on, say on radio at the moment, yeah. that is my main um, DJ and platform. platform yeah. yeah. I'm getting into the club scene and, properly. And you're currently on represent radio, Yeah, right? represent 107.3. What, tell them what, tell them what day is it? Friday, 5 to 7. Oh, Frenzy with Shenzy. Frenzy with Shenzy. You get me? <laughs> representing. It's a representing. You get yeah, me? Right, well, yeah. other, other than that, you're also, um, obviously, like I said, you, do, you write songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, you yeah. Just, on that other occasion, you do vocals, yeah, yeah. rap. I mean, as a songwriter, I guess I'm allowed to kind of Put the title above my name as a, a mobile award. Oh, oh yeah, nominated mobile somewhere. award nominated. Okay, I can't, right, yeah, right. because what that's how it works what, in gonna, the industry. We're gonna, we're gonna get into we're gonna get into what <laughs> yeah. you were nominated. Yeah, yeah. What you were nominated. Well, it wasn't me for. nominated, but yeah, it's a project it's a I wrote on. on. Yeah, 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 that's how it works. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna get into yeah. that. So then, obviously, we have we have um, we have that as well. We have the rap here. Yeah, yeah. We also yeah. have production like yeah. you produce yeah. and we also have engineering you yeah. engineer as well yeah. so you're really your, your your fingers are in quite a few pies in yeah. terms of the music industry and kind of the different avenues and different um, branches of it mm. and um, if we are going to talk about kind of the different projects that you've kind of been involved in what would you, what would you say are perhaps the standout ones uh, right so off the top uh, if Anybody that listens to Graham heavily, then you should know about an artist called uh, Jams. He's in his mid to late twenties. I oh. played a, a huge part in Jams, um, Jams's career. I've known him since year seven, and uh, we've been working together for probably over ten years musically, like on a proper one. We were in school doing Graham clashes and whatever back then, but on a serious one, where it's like let's make CDs. Because, yeah, kids, there was a time when MCs used to take CDs and give it to people. Listen to it in Camden. So, yeah, in Camden, you hear me? Well, no one takes them. Like, even I don't take it. I'm like, yeah, what you want, bro? But, yeah, there was a time, you know, like, print up CDs and that, you know. Uh, so, Jams is project, um, specifically the Warrior project, and we're working on Warrior 2 mm. at the moment. Uh, Nines is project, his um, first album. A one foot out, that one there, and uh, then and one that's coming, and I'm not just saying it because you're here, <laughs> but Emmanuel's album, oh, <laughs> yeah, go. man, the, those ones like, I tell people about a lot, mm. and there's other people I've worked with in that, but like those projects on a whole that I've been involved in, I it's the music's different, like as I said, Jams is grand, Emmanuel is mainly. A spoken word artist mainly because <laughs> he's doing other things on <laughs> the album. Do you hear me? But like that's so different. And then Nines obviously he's rapping as well, and I love my hip hop stuff as well. So you know, and then there's other artists that I've done. You know, I've worked with women as well. Just for those ladies that are there, like you don't work with women. No, I do, I do. <laughs> okay, yeah, I do. But there's no full project. So he likes to um, write songs for women. Yes, I do, and I don't care. Yeah, you know what? that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't care. I'll write songs for a girl. Love Doesn't it. matter. Love it. So obviously, um, um, we touched on the fact that you w we're working on mm. on on a project, um, yeah. a project that I'd say that you were very heavily involved in in terms of just directing me and kind of molding my musical identity because it's the first sort of album where I'm really experimenting with a few things and yeah. and, and and kind of um, things like that. So one thing I did want to ask you was in terms of creating a project in terms of working with other artists in terms of in terms of um maybe molding artists is that something that, that that you find quite natural is that something that you kind of um do you like to leave your own imprint on artists how do you work um in terms of that when you do work with other artists 
Yeah, I enjoy um I enjoy getting my ideas out through somebody if I can't get it out through myself as mm. an artist initially myself, like being a forefront mm. artist, a MC rap or whatever. Some things that I may want to do, I don't necessarily think it will like if I'm looking visually, I may be like, ah, I don't think I have the look to push that kind of image out or maybe my music's already gone in one direction and it will be too much of a switch up for my supporters mm. if I switched over to something else so I'll have these ideas maybe I'll store them on paper my phone or I'll keep it in my mind and then when I meet somebody that comes around that is willing to do something like that then I'll share these ideas with them and if they're willing to try it then we have a go and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, but I'm very much into like helping and mentoring mm. people, whether they be my age, older than me, younger, or whatever, mm. you know, if you're yeah. willing to learn, I'm willing to share something as I am as well. I'm willing to learn something as well. And mm. I don't believe you reach an age where you can no longer take advice. Yeah, you don't right. have to accept what someone's saying is golden, but you can definitely say, okay, I'm going to listen. And then you go and, you know, figure out if you're going to, take it in and keep it or you're gonna say nah you know that's not for me mm. and yeah that's something i tend to do so like in in fact first before we get into it let's tell us about the the the, the hit factory the the, the shed oh the shed tell us a little right. bit about the shed yeah shout out to gq as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> gq came there yeah yeah vgq <laughs> yeah. yeah right so um, I, uh, <laughs> so yeah man uh the shed all right so here's the thing right Back in like 2005, I started off with a little Poundland mic, innit? You know those little bendy webcam mics, yeah, things yeah, that yeah, come? Yes. Yeah, like it, brittle. I put tissue over it to kind of take away the harsh P, the plosive mm. words, and I put tissue over it. Then I put like, um, I got tights and put that around a hanger, sellotaped it to the base of the mic, put it on my computer desk and I would rap like that. Mm. Furthermore, I even had the little phone headphones in my mm. computer tower and the wire wasn't even that long. So imagine the computer's there, mic's there, <laughs> and then like, I'm plugging the headphones in, I have to rap into it like this <laughs> on Windows Movie Maker. Crazy. And then like that was all in my bedroom and I was trying to charge Mandem like 50p an hour back then. Mm. And then like, Got a, a, a borrowed a mic permanently. Um, <laughs> I borrowed a mic um, from a place <laughs> and um, <laughs> and some other equipment. Yeah, from a place borrowed it. And they're gonna get it back. They're gonna get it back. <laughs> I've it and it's it's been twelve years. Okay. <laughs> so I borrowed it and. Um, yeah, man. Like I tried, I started charging the man them five an hour, mm. and then that's when I think because it was like an actual note, like five pound note. Mm. I think that's when they realised like Shem's actually serious about this, mm. and it was a thing where a lot of the people around me they were doing their bit, like they mm. were making their money one way or another. So I said, all right, you lot do that, and eventually that just became the thing. I was working with bare people, and then 2013, 2012, 2013, my late auntie, um, she wanted to play a part in investing in my music, musical future, as she was someone that played a big influence in my life. It was her piano I used to play on mm. at my grandmother's house, and um, she, her, and my mum said, let's help him get a shed. So we. Obviously, the neighbours were complaining as well. Mm. And um, I wanted to do a lot of late sessions and I couldn't. Mm. And obviously, a lot of men then wanted to come make their diss tracks and whatever for, you know, <laughs> their ops and whatnot. And my mum, every now and then, my mum would... If she don't come through the door, she'll call me into her room and tell me off. Yeah. So it was it was cool because it was like, she ain't telling me off in front of my friends. Mm. But when her voice gets loud, yeah. they can hear she's telling me off. <laughs> it's like, you can't be having these people talking, saying all of this and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And people mm. have come into the house with, you know, God knows what, into the into my bedroom and that, you know what I mean? And yeah. And because, you know, situations are serious. And um, when we moved into the shed, it was like, right, I can work here late at night, I can work here early in the morning, and the shed has just been the place. It's like, mm. it's 
it's it is what it is you know what i mean it's a shed i go there i do my work I'm a diy story. you know what i mean like i'm making music by knocking on a desk like literally i knock on the desk mic that up i tap my foot i mic that mm-hmm. up you know what i mean i sample my own things it's, it's a tool shed mm-hmm. i've brought screwdrivers and things in there made music with screwdrivers mm-hmm. like i love that mm-hmm. and the shed has just made me feel like I have my own creative space. Mm. I've had studios to work in elsewhere, you know, outside of Leighton and that, but I still come back to the shed. And the shed's hot. Yeah, it's it's hot, hot, fam. Hot. Especially in the summer. We're talking 2018 summer. Bro, <laughs> it's hot. It's hot, bro. Crazy hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot, but I prefer it mm. because it's like I'll buy new equipment, like, where some people they'll have their little home set up and they'll buy the equipment. Mm. And it's like, like, this is my home equipment, but I'm investing in another studio, I'm gonna go somewhere else, yeah. and it's got better equipment. It's like, no, nah, I'm gonna buy the expensive stuff, keep it here. Mm. And like, I just do my things from there, innit? So yeah. that's the shed. I've had British GQ come through for a, a grime um, documentary. Um, shout out to you and Spencer that came and film, filmed that. Um, I've had different people just come over and they want to be involved in the shed they think it's something amazing someone even said it's on its way to being like Jammer's basement yeah, I yeah, said I don't know yet yeah. Jammer's basement looks like it smells <laughs> I don't know <laughs> you, you get me but we're, 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 we're on something yeah, yeah, we're on to something there, there, there. there so as like um, maybe like an um, up and coming producer someone that wants to get themselves working with artists and, and in that sort of creative space. Do you feel like it's important to have your own space somewhere closer to home, somewhere where you can just go, isolate yourself and make music and similar to you by any means necessary? Yeah, 100. Your foot or wherever? 100%, man. Like, I, I believe if you're a producer, if you're initially your 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 beat maker, composer, and, um, you know, you're making your tunes and that, and you want to feel you want to get into that mind that space where you can really let your thoughts come out you know and and manifest but you don't want to have like your mum or whoever you're saying with bothering you then you know get get your space but obviously there's there's producers that just work off a laptop and headphones and that Mm. you know and they they make bangers Mm. you know but um also if you are an upcoming producer a lot of times the, the, the terminology of being a producer and a, and a beat maker yeah, slash composer kind of gets that. mixed up so like if you are initially because initially we're all just composers mm. and then what happens is you you eventually get onto that path where you become an actual song producer a music compo- uh, an actual music pro- producer as well mm. and um, I say like head for that because when you're an actual producer, you're doing more than just making a beat, yeah. you know? And I don't mean a beat as in drums. I mean like, you know, making an instrumental, mm. doing more. You're actually getting in the session. Mm. Your say is very important, mm. you know? So um, yeah, I definitely say producers need to, you know, study their craft, get into it. I'm not the best, technically, mm. I'm not the best, I'm not the best pianist or whatever, but you know, it is what it is. I know how to kind of draw, the, the right people and um, make things happen. Mm.